to. Okay, this is the uh, temperature with lipase and milk experiment, which is one of my favourites because, mmm, can't be pink, <coughs> lovely. So, our independent variable is temperature, so we're going to be raising the temperature of the lipase. And technically, to make this more uh, accurate, you should warm up the milk and the lipase at the same time to the same temperature and then pour the lipase into the milk and time how long it takes for this to go colourless. Not transparent, just colourless. It's going to go back to um, milk colour. So our substrate inside the test tube is uh, fat, uh, triglycerides. We're using full fat milk so that the reaction will go faster. And the enzyme is the lipase. So I'm just going to test the temperature of both of these solutions. So lovely, my milk is at 25 degrees and oh, my lipase is also at 25 degrees, so that's lovely. So pouring them in and start the stop clock. Start my stop clock if it'll work. Oh, there we go. And we can see it <coughs> getting colourless. Now the reason it's going colourless is what we had in the tube at the beginning <coughs> was an indicator, phenol phthalene. We put sodium hydrogen carbonate solution in to make the pH be more than 10. So what's happening in the tube is the lipase is digesting the triglyceride and releasing fatty acids. And because the fatty acids are acidic, it's kind of a giveaway. Um, they're lowering the pH, and once it gets, we've made enough fatty acids to lower the pH to less than um, 8.3, that phenol phthalene, the little pink colour, will go to colourless. Now what is tricky about this, or one of your evaluation points, should certainly about, be about the subjectivity of the end point. So, it's when you assess that that has actually gone to milk colour. So I'm thinking that mine hasn't gone to milk colour yet, it's still quite pink. But as it gets closer and closer towards the milk colour, uh, it gets harder and harder to spot whether it is still pink. Um, if I was going to do the whole experiment then, I would warm up my water to 35 degrees, keep it at 35 degrees, do the same again, wait till both have got to 35, pour one in to the other and time. And of course what we're expecting to happen is that the time will get faster and faster and faster until the temperature goes high enough to denature. Um, so this is green. <laughs> Um, I've just done it and their denaturation, their enzyme is starting to denature somewhere between 55, so some people got very long times at 55 and some people got very long times at 65 degrees. I don't know if I can say more about this. Oh yeah, so one of the, um, one of the things in your write-ups that you should be using words like collisions and active sites uh, you should be trying to explain at some point why you can't use this method to assess the effect of pH. Um, and that's because obviously if you change the pH of your milk solution to acid, then it's going to be colourless at the start and it's not going to, you're not going to get the colour change. Um, and if you change the pH to 8, that's going to give you a much faster time than the sodium hydrogen carbonate at pH 10 gives you because you're already starting closer to that. I think, I'm looking at my board thinking, are there any more clues? No, nothing. I've, not, I've nothing more. That's it. 